Hi, welcome to the She Moves Mountains podcast. This is your host, Kamala Murphy. Thanks for joining us today as we talk about some of the juicy stuff we women experience that makes this life journey truly amazing. You know, the the nitty gritty, the love, the loss, the falling down and rising up, the getting lost and finding our way again to our hearts, our happiness, and to the awareness that we can and do move mountains. Thank you for joining. Hi, welcome to the She Moves Mountains podcast. This is your host, Kamala Murphy. Thanks for joining us today as we talk about some of the juicy stuff we women experience that make this life journey truly amazing. You know, all the nitty gritty stuff, the love and the loss, falling down and rising up and getting lost and finding our way again, all so that we can finally own being amazing and loving this life. So let's get started. Today, I'm talking about one of those inner mountains that must be moved in order for us to bring our work to the world or step into our callings or even living a great life. And there are actually three pieces of this that go hand in hand that all get woven together. They're the feelings of never being enough, good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, 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 on and on the tendency toward, or maybe even the need for perfectionism. And shame, which I think is the main driver of this whole vicious cycle and, and tangle. And it is really vicious. It, it keeps us holding back, you know, holding back our work or holding ourselves back until we think we might be able to reach some impossibly high standard and then striving for something while we've got the brakes on, and then feeling ashamed because we didn't measure up, because obviously then we must not be good enough, and we go back into hiding. Does that sound familiar? If so, you're not alone. I see this pattern in most of my clients, and I know that that's something, a pattern that I've had for most of my life. And this whole web is something that is both a block to us moving our mountains and doing our work. And for many of us, it's one of the mountains within us that is to be moved. It's something that keeps amazing people, women in particular, from being and doing what they're truly capable of. Because it keeps us hiding, or at least not showing up fully. And if you're like me, you know, if you're hiding out and not showing up the way you know that your spirit wants you to, then you won't be feeling like a million bucks. And that induces even even more shame. So I'm super grateful for those who have done work on this. I know in the the 80s John Bradshaw and a lot of other people did a lot of great work creating an awareness about shame, but especially Brene Brown uh, for really throwing the covers back on, on the idea of shame and this web that we get tangled in and really shining a light on all of it so that we can disempower the shame and take back the power that we've given it. Because the truth is, when we go into hiding about shame and perfectionism and not enoughness, those things wind up uh, running the show. And we're left like the, the poor cousins taking up the crumbs instead of living the amazing lives that we're meant for. Now, Almost every person has feelings of shame because that's a, it's a normal human feeling, emotion. But some have 
what's known as toxic shame, where at our core, we feel like we're, we're bad, we're inherently flawed, we're defective, and we are almost, almost feel compelled to hide. We strive to be perfect, and we have these nearly impossibly high standards that we're, we're going for that we probably can't meet because they are so ridiculously high. And we go for them, we're striving for them because we think that if we do achieve this standard, if we do reach this level, we'll be considered good enough by others and by ourselves, and then we'll be able to erase our shame. But with those impossibly high standards, we often fall short, which again gets us trapped into this web of shame. The other piece is that because we're human, most of us really desire connection. We want to be able to connect really deeply with others. We want to be able to speak about our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, and even our shame. We want to be able to discuss it with another. But because of that compelling need to hide it, we keep it secret. And this secrecy stimulates even more shame. Again, we're caught in this web. Recently, I was at a workshop and the question came up, what's the wobble? What's the thing in your life that prevents you from really stepping into your calling and your work? Almost immediately, I knew that my wobble was around my sense of shame. I was afraid to put myself out more fully because I was afraid that people would see how deep my shame went, how at my core I felt so flawed and so defected, defective. Um, that shame was so deep, and I didn't want anyone to know about it because I've been a counselor. I have done plenty of work on my shame. I've read more self-help books than I could count. But this, this idea of the shame and how deep it went was really different. This was my at my core shame. And I saw that I was terrified that if I really stepped into my calling, if I were really visible, people would see how deep that went. And even that caused me to feel even more shame. You know, that despite all this work that I'd done and all the study, I still had this deep, deep level of shame. And it struck me to my core. It was, it was scary how deep I felt I was going. I felt like I was going to throw up. But I knew in that moment, in that workshop where I felt safe enough to Mm, at least approach it. And I need to needed to take the risk to actually speak about it. So even though I was scared, 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 and shaken in my boots, I stood up and I shared about this. And as we sort of dug into all of it, and I realized if at some level I was afraid all hell would break loose if I exposed myself like this, then there was no way that I'd want to step into being more visible, right? So I'd likely continue to sabotage my efforts in little ways, like putting out something or expressing myself, but still having the, the safety breaks on, right? And that I would try and stay in my comfort zone. But that's not what I want for my life. I don't believe that God wants that for me. I wouldn't be called to this if there weren't something bigger to step into. So as I was sharing this, all of this with this group, I suddenly had this sense of freedom. You know, shining a light on the shame lessened its grip on me. 
So it wasn't that all hell broke loose, but rather a sense of freedom broke loose. And that was so exciting. So here's where I want to go with all of this. I want to shine the light on shame. Most of us have the feelings of shame and it's a normal thing. But when it's buried so deeply and it's shrouded in secrecy and kept hidden, it, that shame thrives. But that's not what we're meant for. We're meant to have these amazing lives and shame has to mm, be shown for what it is. The writer Anais Nin, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, wrote about shame that it's a lie someone told you about yourself. And I, w- I want to add, and you believed it. So that's what shame is. It's most often a lie that we were told about who we, who we are and um, what our value is. And then the standards that we were told that we had to live up to, to make other people more comfortable or to feel okay about themselves. And by shining this light on shame, on these beliefs, we can determine for ourselves if any of that is true. And we can find out what is true for us today. And that's what I'd like to encourage you to do. Look at some of the standards that you've been holding yourself to. You know, find out are those those standards one that really support you and your well-being and your deepest desires. Can you see that some of the things you felt shameful about or were shamed for were based on lies? Someone's el- someone else's um, needs or beliefs or her culture, any of those things can trap us in this web of shame. As I mentioned, I think it's high time for us to be shining a light on shame, telling the truth about it, so we can bring our important gifts to the forefront and be moving the mountains that we're meant to move. So if you recognize that that some form of this shame web is hindering you in your life, whether it's the shame or the perfectionism or the not enough stuff is really, it's keeping you stuck. I would love to connect with you and have just a short 15 minute call. So um, if you feel like that would be of interest to you, please send me an email at soulsparkler at gmail.com so we can set a time to, to chat. I would love to do that. Ah, boy, this is such a rich topic. Even if it is uncomfortable, I'm sure that we'll have more episodes on this topic or in the vicinity um, in the future. In the meantime, I send you blessings and hope that you will start shining a light on the beliefs that you, you have about who you are and who you think you have to be. Let me know what you discover, okay? Until next time, this is Kamala wishing you many blessings. Take care. You've been listening to the She Moves Mountains podcast coming to you every week. If you're a woman who wants to move mountains in your own life, please make sure to subscribe or follow this podcast. And if you've laughed or gotten teary or smiled knowingly thinking, oh yeah, that's me too, please go ahead and rate the episode with five stars. It'll be a feel-good thing to do. Thanks a bunch. Lots of love and blessings to you. This is Kamala signing off. Until next week. Take care.